Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wistar again. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to use constructors when we build objects for our classes. Constructors are really important because they allow us to set up our objects to have the correct initial state or the way that we initialize the variables inside of our objects. So we're going to talk about what a constructor is and how to use them. And then we're going to talk about how you can have different kinds of constructors within the same class and how you can figure out how to use those constructors by looking at the documentation for an individual class. So what's a constructor? Well we mentioned before that a constructor is a tool that we use to initialize a object and in particular it's a method. Um, it's a special kind of method which we'll talk about in a minute but uh, what its purpose is, is to give a value to all of the variables that live inside of a class. So in this case, for example, this example here, when we construct a rectangle, we have to give initial values to the length and the width. And that's why we put numbers in the parentheses. So the parameters to a constructor are what we assign to the variables inside of our class. Now, what makes a constructor method special is that you don't ever call it. It gets called automatically and it gets called when you use the keyword new. So when I say new rectangle that calls the constructor. You can't just call a constructor anytime you like. In fact if you try to call it any other time you'll get a syntax error. And this also points out why you see parentheses after the name of a class when you use new. It's because deep down inside there that's a method call. You're just calling a constructor uh, just like you would normally use parentheses after you call any other kind of method. And the reason why you've seen mostly empty parentheses at this point is that most of the constructors that we've been calling haven't had any parameters. But now that we're studying constructors in detail, it's time to think about how you can have parameters in your constructor. Uh, now the syntax for using a constructor is that you uh, use the keyword new, use the name of the class, and then in parentheses you list out all the parameter values in the order that the constructor is expecting them for each of the different variables that it contains. Um, and again, like we've said before, if a constructor doesn't take any parameters, you still have to include the parentheses because it's still a method call. If you just use the name of the class, like in the example here, you'll get a syntax error. Now we talked about this idea of having a class have more than one constructor, which sounds a little weird, but what it really does is it gives us, as a programmer, more flexibility. Because sometimes you want to uh, use a lot of details when you create a new object because you know exactly what you want it to look like. Other times you really don't know at all, and so you just want it to get created with the default values and then you'll figure them out later. So if you look, for example, at uh, the code here below, we actually have three different constructors for the same class. And each one of them takes a different set of parameters. That's the important thing to understand here. If you have more than one constructor, they have to all have different sets of parameters. Otherwise, the compiler just gets confused. It has no idea which uh, constructor you're calling unless it can look at the list of parameters and figure it out. Now, how do you figure out what the parameters are when you use a constructor? Well, again, that's where anytime you want to learn something about a class, whether it's a method or a constructor or the purpose of the class, you have to look at the instruction manual. You have to look at the Java Quick Reference for that class. And you'll see, we'll look at an example in a minute, where if you look at the very top section of the um, manual page for a Java class, you will see the list of all the constructors and you can click on each one to get some more information. Let's see what that looks like. So if we go to the uh, Javadoc page for the class integer, class integer is an object which you can use to store an integer. Now that might seem kind of redundant because we have this variable type already called int, but it turns out there are some times when you can't just use a primitive uh, when you're storing data. You have to use an object. And so this essentially is an object which can hold that int value. It's called a wrapper class because it wraps itself around the int value. 
And there's a class like this for every primitive type. There's a class double, a class boolean, a class float, and in this case we have a class integer, which is the wrapper class for the primitive type int. But that's not really why we're doing this example. We're taking a look at this example to see how you um, read the documentation for the constructors of a class. And re again, remember, it's the first major section if you scroll down the page. So if we scroll down a little bit, well, okay, maybe it's the second. It's the first one that contains methods. After you look at the summary of fields, you will see the constructor summary. Notice in this case we have one, two constructors. Also, like I said, they have to have different sets of parameters. In this case, um, one constructor takes as its parameter an int, and the other one contain takes as its parameter a string. And if we click on each one of those, it will describe to us how that particular constructor works. In this case, the top one, you would just pass it an int value and it would construct an integer object based on that. But the other thing that the second constructor does is it allows you to construct an integer um, out of a string. And this is actually the most convenient way to take a number that the user typed in that you were storing as a string and use it like a number. You can create an integer object out of that string and then you can assign that integer object to an int. Um, so in this case here we've got an example of this constructor which takes a string uh, and you'll see an example of that in a minute. So let's take a look at some code that shows examples of using both of those constructors. Well, here we go. So we've got a very simple class. All it does is create two separate integer objects and notice in this case, in the first case we called the first constructor that takes an int and in the second case, we call the constructor that takes a string. And then we printed both variables. And when we run our program, we get the same value twice because we've constructed the same kind of object just using two different constructors. So again, in summary for this lesson, remember that a constructor is designed to take parameter values and use them to set up the variables inside your class object. And you can have as many different kinds of constructors for a class as you want, as long as each one of them is different. If you want to know how the constructors in a class work, you have to read the manual page. Okay?